Imagine que estamos no futuro. Uma arma nova e curiosa é detonada sobre uma grande cidade. Não se dá qualquer explosão, destruição visível, mas todos os dispositivos eletrónicos no raio de ação dessa arma ficam fora de serviço, de forma permanente. Em casa ou no escritório, todos os dispositivos eletrónicos são desativados. Deixa de haver computadores, televisores, sistema de apoio à vida nos hospitais, fornecimento de água, aquecimento e eletricidade. É um verdadeiro regresso ao mundo das trevas. Everything that we've built up in the last 200 years, let alone in the last 20 years, would be completely destroyed, would be non-existent. Imagine the cost that it would be to rebuild our cities. Think of it in terms of transportation. We might even have to pump water. It's at that basic level. Imagine toda uma panóplia de armas novas, uma capaz de desligar a rede elétrica da vossa cidade e a outra de vos destruir. We have been testing what I'm going to call microwave weapons for crowd control. You can affect a large area by sweeping the beam and making sure that people are in the beam long enough to get a very nasty sensation of being cooked, which, to a very fine depth, they are. Se nunca ouviram falar dessas armas, não se surpreendam. O desenvolvimento dessas armas, que mais parecem saídas da ficção científica do que do mundo real, tem sido mantido em segredo. We're just learning enough about the science to be dangerous. It's like giving a kindergartner a hand grenade and hoping they don't pull the pin. Sejam bem-vindos ao mundo da guerra eletromagnética. A arma invisível. Bell Island, Newfoundland, à beira do Oceano Atlântico, era um lugar excepcionalmente calmo, até uma certa manhã de domingo de abril de 1978. Quando as pessoas iam a caminho da igreja, surgiu um clarão gigantesco no céu, sacudindo esta pacata ilha canadiana. Barbara McKing testemunhou esse clarão a partir da janela de casa em Conception Bay, a 20 km de Bell Island. We heard this terrific, loud bang, boom, noise. Uh, the house shook. The dishes rattled in the cupboards. We ran to the, uh, the living room window and, and looked out in time to see an oval-shaped object that was moving very, very quickly, and it just seemed to leave a bit of a trail behind. It was quite loud, quite deafening. There was no wobbly movement or anything, no. It was just a, a trajectory that was heading toward, as we thought at the time, the ocean, but subsequently did land on the island. Yeah. O estranho fecho foi avistado por várias dezenas de pessoas à medida que explodia na propriedade de Jimmy e Susie Bigford, abalando a solene manhã do domingo. Os televisores explodiram, os fusíveis saltaram da parede, bolas de fogo atravessaram as casas. Yes, I was on balance, April 2, 1978. Steve Parsley, vizinho e gerro dos Bigford, tinha acabado de sair do celeiro quando surgiu o clarão. Os satélites registaram emissões de luz equivalentes às de uma explosão de 10 megatoneladas, ou seja, uma das maiores emissões da história. Na capital lotava, os sensores militares também registaram a explosão de 10 megatoneladas. O primeiro-ministro foi informado e o exército enviou o especialista em fogos de James Farrell ao local. As soon as I saw the fuses and, and, and the embedment in the wall, I knew I had something here that was different. I was amazed. The burn was uh, in shambles. Chickens and hens were, were dead. When I saw the electricity after, or the supercharge after attacking the nails in the floor. When I went outside, uh, I noticed the wires, uh, insulation just dripping off the, the wires. I showed Mr. Beckford. He, he, he was amazed. He said, my God, what was it? And I said, boy, I don't know.
Enquanto os militares continuavam a investigar, os serviços de informação da polícia montada decidiram abrir o seu próprio inquérito independente. We had uh, reports from from across the uh, Conception Bay here uh, of people that uh, reported seeing uh, uh, objects fall on the island and so that. So we checked that out. I ruled it as as uh, an electrical, uh, possibly lightning or or ball lightning, and 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 that's how how we uh, we concluded our file. It wasn't a lightning strike. It was a it was a boom of a, of a ray. It was something uh, like I would see in a James Bond movie. Lightning, I don't think this blast up here, you know, we came from God knows where, investigating them. So it seems like it was, you know, it was more than lightning. Os relatórios oficiais concluíram que a explosão foi causada por um clarão mas os residentes reagiram com ceticismo e questionaram se não teria sido uma experiência militar que dera para o torto. O ano era 1978 e o contexto político de Guerra Fria dava aso a um clima crescente de especulação e de medo. A Rússia e os Estados Unidos protegiam e desenvolviam o seu arsenal nuclear, motivos suficientes para o clima de medo. Contudo, aquilo que desconhecia é que esses inimigos também estavam a desenvolver e testar um tipo de armas novo e secreto. Quando se deu a explosão em Bell Island, essas armas eletromagnéticas ou de energia direcionada já estavam em desenvolvimento há mais de 30 anos. Essa investigação manteve-se até este século e conduzirá a uma nova forma de travar guerras. revolution in military affairs, the RMA as the military calls it, which is a total shift away from bombs, bullets and ordnance into uh, energy weapons as the primary driver, whether it be high-powered lasers, uh, ion beams, um, microwave radiation for creating heat sensations on the body. This is where the direction is going. And the military in a paper called The Revolution in Military Affairs and Conflict Short of War, written in 1989 by the U.S. Army War College, talked about this shift and they equated it to the um, discovery of or the introduction rather of gunpowder in the Middle Ages in Europe and the introduction of atomic weapons in the last century. The change that's taking place now is just as profound uh, as the changes that took place then. Já alguém disse que a história da humanidade é a história da guerra. A ser verdade, então, a história do homem está prestes a dar um salto assustador em direção ao futuro. Since the beginning of the age of modern science, you've obviously seen a rapid uh, development in rapid improvement in the technology of weapons. It's perfectly obvious. Uh, and uh, you starting with gunpowder, really. Uh, The, the cannon-bearing ship, uh, the rise of air forces, uh, improvements in explosives, um, and so on and so forth. Quando se deu a Primeira Guerra Mundial, toda essa tecnologia e força militares foram recuperadas para o mundo. Uma geração que gozava a paz e o progresso da sociedade liberal ficou surpreendida e chocada. Essa guerra lançou o mundo inteiro para um século de violência. This ascending curve of technical capacity to unleash violence, of course, reached its absolute apogee with the appearance of the nuclear weapon. This really brought to a culmination a tendency that had begun you know, way back in the Stone Age, when the first human being picked up a bone and started beating his rival, it really began there and continued all the way to the nuclear weapon. A perspectiva de destruição recíproca pode ter refriado as superpotências, mas não foi suficiente para abrandar o desenvolvimento do armamento. 
À medida que se entrou no século XXI, a mesma tecnologia que nos trouxe as vantagens das microondas, dos telemóveis e dos controles remotos é agora utilizada numa nova panóplia de poderosas armas. O desenvolvimento dessas armas foi mantido em segredo até ao dia em que o jornalista do New York Times começou a investigar. O New York Times queria fazer uma história sobre as novas fronteiras de militar e tecnologia. And we have done a lot of work previously on what have been called smart bombs and the satellite-guided munitions. But we really wanted to find really what the next frontier was. And I did some reporting, uh, talking to some military analysts that I know, um, and also some people actually in the investment community who follow companies that make their money off government contracts. And they mentioned to me this whole new category of weapons known as directed energy or electromagnetic weapons. And that's really how we found out about it. And then we started doing some reporting. And one of the hard things about it was that the government really didn't want to come forward with a lot of information. Most of these programs still remain secret or classified. Os fabricantes de armamentos estão atualmente a desenvolver uma panóplia completa de armas eletromagnéticas que libertam uma força invisível centenas de vezes mais potente do que a corrente elétrica de um relâmpago. Uma tem capacidade para destruir mísseis inimigos no céu. Outra consegue encandear soldados no campo de batalha. Há uma arma capaz de controlar uma multidão agitada, queimando a superfície da pele. Se fosse detonada sobre uma grande cidade, uma arma eletromagnética destruiria todos os componentes eletrónicos em poucos segundos. Apesar de surtirem efeitos distintos, têm uma surpreendente característica em comum. Usam a energia direcionada para criar um poderoso impulso eletromagnético. O que é um eletromagnetic pulse weapon? Actually, you can think of it probably too simply, but not terribly inaccurately, as a lightning bolt on steroids. Right now, an electromagnetic pulse from a lightning bolt is a pretty crude club. The wavelength is way too long. So ideally, what you would like to do is shift the energy of the electromagnetic pulse from the long wavelength of a lightning bolt down into a microwave. Now, what is a microwave? Microwaves are all the waves between a meter and a millimeter. Now think of how well that couples with everything in our society, because almost everything we use electronically fits between a meter and a millimeter. If you look at a standard electromagnetic device that's made to read electromagnetic pulses like your cell phone, here's an antenna. It's actually made to absorb electromagnetic radiation. It's just not designed to take the power of the pulse of an electromagnetic weapon. These electromagnetic weapons can be used to destroy basically anything with a chip in it. Not only communication systems and devices, but power systems, television and radio systems. Even most cars these days have an electronic ignition in them. And if they were deployed in the relevant place, in our society now, and in many countries, anything with a chip in it could be disabled. The electromagnetic pulse effect as a weapon really came to our attention quite accidentally during the early atomic tests. When the first detonations occurred, unprotected electromagnetic equipment, which we had a lot of back then, died. And of course, this came to everybody's attention because a lot of this was instrumentation that was supposed to be recording the effects of the weapon. So of course, everybody standing around this early destroyed and arced out and melted equipment, shaking their heads and saying, what happened? Especially since there was no wind damage, there was no overpressure damage, there was just fried electrical equipment. Well, it didn't take long after a few tests and iterations to realize there's a huge electromagnetic pulse generated when a nuclear weapon explodes. And a huge electromagnetic pulse is very destructive to unprotected electrical equipment. And then it was sort of like, whoa, there's a weapon effect here. So early in the 50s, at Los Alamos, where they were doing this high-level nuclear work, they said, what about just creating this electromagnetic pulse? And that's where the early work was done on trying to figure out a way to convert explosive energy into electrical energy. And since that time, we've had laboratories and an active research program that's been spending its time developing electromagnetic and high-energy microwave weapons. O laboratório de Los Alamos, no Novo México, é o local de origem da bomba atómica. Toda a zona é controlada pelo Departamento de Energia e pelo Departamento da de Defesa. Cartazes alertam os visitantes para a possibilidade de se fecharem estradas sem aviso prévio. 
Custa acreditar que este local proibido possa ter algum tipo de ligação com a pacata Bell Island em Newfoundland. Porém, em 1978, a ligação foi confirmada quando satélites do Departamento da de Defesa norte-americano captaram uma emissão de luz muito mais forte do que a bomba de Hiroshima. Este episódio originou a deslocação de dois cientistas de Los Alamos para Bell Island. No espaço de 24 horas, os dois investigadores, John Warren e Robert Freeman, chegaram à ilha remota da costa leste de Newfoundland. A chegada dos dois visitantes de um laboratório de armamento norte-americano surpreendeu os moradores de Bell Island. Porém, a situação tornou-se ainda mais anómala com a chegada de um general russo, escoltado por militares norte-americanos e canadianos. O que levaria os russos a atravessar continentes para levar a cabo uma investigação na casa dos Bigfoot. Military personnel from from Canada, uh, from the United States as well as from Russia, uh, were here uh, over the next period of time uh, down into the area. Uh, they came to the office and, and wondered if we had anything different than what they had they had obtained themselves, which we didn't. Uh, we shared stories. Uh, however, that's uh, that, that's all. They didn't share any of their findings with us. I gave them uh, exhibits that I had seized. They placed the the exhibits in a in a metal box, uh, which was uh, properly locked and secured. They were very secretive. They uh, If they wanted to discuss anything, they said, excuse us for a moment, and they went a distance, and uh, they wrote down notes. And uh, they'd come back, and uh, they'd interview me again. Por que motivo dois inimigos da Guerra Fria se deslocariam a Bell Island para investigar um relâmpago? Será que foi mesmo um? Ou será que foi, tal como especularam os jornais e os cientistas, o resultado de uma experiência militar que deu para o torto? The precision of our electromagnetic pulse, much like the precision of our regular munitions, our conventional munitions, has increased significantly. Uh, so we'll be able to take out the electricity in a city block or in a command and control uh, center, something like that. If we were looking at what a electromagnetic pulse might look like, if you could see it, it would be sort of like when you see in the cartoons, when there's a pulsating cone of energy that comes out of something that comes down from the line of sight that would kind of be like what an electromagnetic pulse would visualize like if you could visualize it electromagnetic waves uh, come of course in all sort of um, forms uh, people may not realize that the light that uh, uh, you know that makes me visible in this moment all right is an electromagnetic wave it's a particular part of the what we call the spectrum of electromagnetic waves uh, that our eyes are sensitive to. Electromagnetic waves are also heat, for example. When uh, we say that the sun warms us up, it's a particular form of electromagnetic waves that we don't see, but that our skin sees, and sees it as warmth. We are in a soup of uh, electromagnetic radiation. Almost anywhere you are, you can uh, pick up your cell phone and receive a phone call. You can turn your TV and some signal will come through. As ondas eletromagnéticas podem ser utilizadas das mais variadas formas. No Alasca há um lugar que faz precisamente isso. O ARP é uma experiência de energia direcionada levada a cabo pelo exército norte-americano. A partir do vasto campo de antenas do ARP, as ondas são direcionadas e orientadas para a ionosfera, muito acima da superfície terrestre. A ionosfera faz parte da atmosfera. Contém partículas com cargas elétricas que atuam como um espelho, refletindo as ondas de rádio de volta à Terra. Enviar ondas de rádio para a ionosfera pode acelerar as suas partículas e aquecer zonas muito específicas. Por sua vez, essas partículas refletem a energia de volta para a Terra. 
use a system like HARP and you can create really extreme levels of power. HARP, by sending energy up into the ionosphere in the right frequency range, can tap energy that's already there and actually convert it for use within the system. O ARP é tão poderoso que consegue levar a ionosfera a reagir em harmonia a esse sinal de impulsos. O sinal do ARP pode ser utilizado como um radar defensivo que alcança para além da linha do horizonte e permite detectar mísseis e aeronaves que venham na sua direção. Para tal, o ARP recorre a dois sistemas distintos, um para criar um espelho de plasma e outro para devolver o sinal. Assim que os mísseis inimigos são detectados pelo ARPA, os militares podem utilizar uma variedade de armas de energia direcionada para destruir os alvos inimigos no ar. HARP é um acrônimo, na verdade, para o High Frequency Active Auroral Research Project. It started with uh, Dr. Bernard Eastland's um, really a visionary approach to missile defense, looking for a way um, to really deal with the threat of intercontinental ballistic missiles from either rogue nations or, or our traditional adversaries. Basically, the antenna, as originally conceived, was to be big enough and powerful enough to make major modifications to the ionosphere. This was all done at the height of the Cold War, and my focus was on defense against a major Russian missile attack. The plan was to make a shield over Canada, over the United States, over the whole world, which a missile could not penetrate. Enquanto os norte-americanos desenvolviam esta tecnologia, os russos realizavam experiências semelhantes. Especula-se que a explosão de Bell Island resultou de um teste soviético às novas armas de energia direcionada. Reza a teoria que Bell Island atuou como um imã gigante. A localidade contém uma grande reserva de minério de ferro no subsolo e as minas abandonadas continham milhares de tubagens em cobra. Acredita-se que o sinal eletromagnético passou por cima da ilha nesse dia de 1978 e que foi atraído pelo campo magnético. The Bell Island event is a unique event and we have I have not heard of repeat events, so it's very hard to really pin down what happened there. But uh, the types of things that might have occurred involved high voltages involved electrically conducting paths through the, through the atmosphere. And a fully developed antenna, as I was describing, would probably allow you to induce voltages in pipelines, to do things that could create high voltages. In, in terms of, um, of Bell Island, you know, I, I, I can't speak specifically to the events that, that, that may have occurred there and, and did occur there. Uh, in terms of connecting it clearly to a transmitter like HARP. But let's talk about some of the things that you could expect to see um, from, some, from, from these kinds of uh, technologies being deployed. One of the big issues is what happens if the signal coming off the ground that gets focused up into the ionosphere acts as a conductive shunt. In other words, like a um, copper wire being plugged in to a power source. Uh, this energy then would act as sort of a conduit to draw energy off of the ionosphere. Now, what would that do? You would create the biggest bolt of lightning you've ever seen in your life, striking the Earth 40 times a second until all that energy was discharged. Apesar de só há bem pouco tempo se começar a falar em armas eletromagnéticas, a ciência que as sustenta não é nova. This research uh, started quite some time ago, uh, in fact, even before the Second World War. And uh, uh, the reason I think that uh, it has only sort of come, if you can put it that way, to fruition now, um, is, uh, <clears throat> first of all, that the uh, electronic world has become so dominant. The web, the internet, and, and this sort of a pervasive global electronic networks, which now become uh, so substantial that they become military targets. 
So if you can cripple whatever makes this global network vibrant and active and useful, you have a powerful advantage. O campo de batalha pode já ter mudado. Houve alguma especulação em torno das armas utilizadas no Kosovo em 1999. Durante a Guerra do Iraque, em 2003, houve relatos do disparo de uma versão ultra-secreta do míssel de cruzeiro Tomahawk. Pouco tempo depois, Bagdad ficou às escuras, pese embora não se tenham registado danos físicos na central elétrica da cidade. Aquilo que se sabe é que se o objetivo era deflagrar uma bomba eletrónica de micro-ondas ultra-potente, ela teria de ser lançada com um míssil de cruzeiro Tomahawk. I believe, and my military sources indicate to me, that these devices have been used, perhaps for the first time in Iraq. Yes, but there's been no public confirmation of that. Será que os dias de choque e espanto estão a ficar para trás, para serem substituídos por armas e máquinas invisíveis? Estas armas novas, bombas eletrónicas, lasers, masers e microondas vão utilizar energia direcionada para destruir mísseis no ar, neutralizar o inimigo sem derramar sangue e atacar os sistemas de comunicações, provocando o caos nos centros de comando e de controlo. Ao contrário das bombas convencionais, as bombas eletrónicas conseguem apontar e cair diretamente sobre o alvo. Um enorme impulso de corrente atravessa a bomba, transportando energia para a extremidade diretamente para a antena de microondas. A bomba autodestrói-se, desintegrando-se em altitude, ao mesmo tempo que o feixe de micro-ondas explode por cima da área-alvo. Esta área designa-se por pegada fatal. Everything electronic that wasn't hardened there would arc, hiss, and you would smell a lot of burned varnish. We've all burned out an electronic appliance in here, and you know that characteristic, uh-oh, I've cooked it smell. You would smell that a lot <laughs> because your devices would be arcing over. The goal of the electromagnetic pulse weapon is to make portions of the circuit arc and burn. There's a second category of weapons that basically use laser energy. Whereas the electromagnetic pulse weapon is one big powerful pulse, a laser is a continuously delivered stream of radiation with enough intensity to cause damage. We will be able to use high energy lasers not only to defeat enemy aircraft and even more importantly um, unmanned aerial vehicles which are small targets. We've actually successfully in several dozen tests defeated artillery shells with high energy lasers that are directed at a very small spot with enough energy to detonate the shell in the air before it lands. Estas armas novas não se destinam exclusivamente a aniquilar peças de artilharia e sistemas de comunicações. Também são concebidas para atingir pessoas. Obviously, one thing that's looked at is a blinding laser on the battlefield, so that soldiers attacking, for instance, in a particular position, could be subjected to a broadband sweeping laser with enough energy to temporarily blind the soldier if he were looking in the direction of the laser. And we have been testing what I'm going to call microwave weapons for crowd control. What they do is, again, instead of using a single pulse, these are continuously directed energy weapons that heat the skin very rapidly, much like your microwave oven. In fact, almost exactly like your microwave oven, but they're controlled broadcast microwave pulses. And obviously, you can derail a opposing force very quickly if all the soldiers begin to feel a burning sensation on their skin that's truly a burning sensation. Now, the nice thing about, um, from the offensive point of view of a microwave weapon, is you don't really have to critically injure people with a microwave. Em países devastados por conflitos, nem sempre é fácil distinguir as forças inimigas da população civil. Ao recorrerem a armas de energia direcionada não letais, semelhantes aos inofensivos ponteiros laser, ou aos leitores de códigos de barras dos supermercados, os militares conseguem deter os inimigos sem provocar danos irreversíveis. In Somalia, what you saw were Somali militia interspersed with civilians, not wearing uniforms, almost impossible to discriminate from the civilians who surrounded them, who were then using that as an opportunity to fire upon U.S. forces. Um, in a situation like that, the ability to disperse that force using a non-lethal system um, would be very advantageous and eliminates the 
the situation of you having to fire upon civilians in uh, an environment where that's the last thing that you really want to do. Obviously, if your goal is to um, cause your opponent to desist in whatever he's doing that you don't like, as opposed to killing him, then these are ideal weapons. And as we become more civilized, and as war, the face of war gets more widely broadcast, the days where I think it would be politically acceptable to create mass carnage on the battlefield like was in World War I, those days are past politically. So in point of fact, as a reality, we must have weapons that make war, if you will, to the extent it can be, make war in a more civilized manner. Será que as armas eletromagnéticas são mais civilizadas do que as armas convencionais? Inicialmente, os efeitos a longo prazo da bomba atômica foram minimizados e mal compreendidos. Is by the wings of the Air Force. Every weapon has its unintended and its unexpected consequences. You only have to look at the nuclear weapon to see that. We see the Gulf War syndrome, now believed perhaps to be traceable back to exposure to chemicals during that war, maybe to the debris again in the new war. They're not really sure about it. Nevertheless, it's acknowledged that they have had health effects that the veterans of other wars uh, did not have, and they're being compensated by the government. The government may know more than the rest of us about the potential health effects of these sorts of systems. We do know that the Air Force has a human systems laboratory where they have been researching what these devices could potentially do to humans. That research has not yet been made public. Theoretically, these weapons are meant to affect electronics without hurting humans, but obviously it will take years and years until we truly know all the health ramifications of, what these, of how these weapons operate. Essas armas recorrem à energia direcionada, muito à semelhança da potência de uma trovoada muito forte. Quando se deu a explosão em Bell Island, na casa dos Bigford, ninguém conseguiu perceber logo se o fenómeno misterioso causou vítimas. Os vizinhos afirmaram que a Suzy Bigford nunca mais foi a mesma desde que foi atingida pela explosão nesse dia. Pode ser coincidência, mas ela acabou por morrer quatro meses depois do incidente. A causa da morte que consta na certidão de óbito é ataque cardíaco. Well, it's been suggested that these weapons are more humane because they attack technology, computers and so forth, rather than human beings, and the VMADs uh, attack the human in a, in a non-lethal way. But that's a very tricky question, uh, because um, there's a distinct possibility, by the way, that others will get these weapons and turn it around and fry our computers and so forth. And believe me, uh, the job of protecting weaponry from the electromagnetic pulse is one that is, has not been solved and may not really in principle be solvable. Because of its technological superiority, the U.S. military is certainly the most susceptible to those types of technological innovation. And that's why other countries who realize they can't take the U.S. military on in a, in a, in a, in a fair fight um, are interested in developing these types of things because they think it's going to help them to, to even out the playing field. A cada geração e após cada guerra, assistimos a formas novas e mais avançadas de matar pessoas. A bomba atômica na Segunda Guerra Mundial, o napalm no Vietnã, as bombas inteligentes na tempestade do deserto. Atualmente, os Estados Unidos estão preparados para surpreender o mundo com um vasto leque de armas novas e mais poderosas. Outros países já entraram na corrida para estas novas armas eletromagnéticas. I don't know who has electromagnetic pulse weapons like the ones that we are developing. The reality is, is probably uh, countries like China and Russia. Both do have very advanced uh, military technology. 
China, for example, is uh, at the upper tier of laser technology and things like that. So, you know, I think those are the three countries who will develop this technology. Perhaps India might be able to do it. Uma vez que estas armas eletromagnéticas são muito recentes, não estão sujeitas aos tratados que regulamentam as armas convencionais. Os Estados Unidos planeiam construir um escudo de defesa balístico sobre o norte do Canadá para derrubar eventuais mísseis balísticos. Será que isto vai conduzir à utilização de armas eletromagnéticas no espaço e libertar forças demasiado poderosas para serem controladas? I became interested in the Space Preservation Act and in developing the Space Preservation Act when I learned that uh, our administration in, in Washington was uh, looking at a, um, at a program called Vision 2020. And Vision 2020 actually is a program for the United States to dominate the world from outer space. Now, I love America. And I'd like to say that, that we're number one. But let me tell you something. We don't need to be number one in weapons in space. The Department of Defense has been working at a facility in uh, Alaska, which is doing research into effects of electromagnetic frequencies in the ionosphere. And that facility, which is called HARP, has raised concern among many individuals about how this research would be applied. Uh, for example, uh, we know that, uh, according to some of the research, as these energy pulses are directed into the ionosphere, they, they can have uh, somewhat of an effect. Que tipo de efeitos negativos ainda estão por vir? Será que os impulsos eletromagnéticos vão esburacar a ionosfera e destruir uma das camadas protetoras à semelhança do efeito da poluição na camada de ozono? Some people I know have worried about messing with the ionosphere and I think that needs a lot of investigation because at the time we were looking at something that could be used to defend us uh, 6000 nuclear warheads looking at you kind of trump just about every other thing you might want to look at but uh if you want to if they ever wanted to build this antenna as big as i was talking about then you really need to look at side effects a weapon can be used for protection it can be used for deterrence it also can be used for naked aggression just like the scientists that were involved in the manhattan project at the end of the day we're not responsible for where those devices were used. That decision was made by political authorities. The people involved in the development of these systems are by and large scientists at heart. And the decisions about how these devices will be used will be made by military and political officials. There are several acts on the books of both the United States and of course the United Nations that deal with the preservation of space and uh, not using it for nuclear weapons platforms. But I don't think there's much in the way of verbiage addressing uh, non-nuclear conventional weapons platforms in space. And um, as our recent decision to abandon the um, anti-ballistic missile treaty uh, and I think clearly demonstrates, when we develop a technology that we think we can validly employ to defend the United States, I forget the treaties. We are going to defend ourselves. We are going to change the treaties to be consistent with what technology now permits us. Um, that's just going to happen. Since 9-11, the, the temperature of the country has changed, I mean, to a very strongly um, pro-military um, uh, view of the world. And at the same time, the risks are things that were thought of even a couple of years ago as things we wouldn't, uh, wouldn't take, risks we wouldn't take. Now people are more willing to take them in exchanging um, what they think is safety security uh, uh, for their own personal liberties and, and, and use of, of new technologies that might have other impacts uh, that are unanticipated. A tecnologia da energia direcionada pode levar-nos a resultados negros. Essa tecnologia poderosa pode ser utilizada para aquecer a ionosfera, transformando o clima numa arma de guerra. Imaginem, por exemplo, utilizar um dilúvio para destruir uma cidade ou um tornado para dizimar um exército no deserto. 
military has spent a huge amount of time on weather modification as a concept uh, for battle environments. Now, most people don't know, but the United States signed treaties with the former Soviet Union and 60 other countries in the mid-1970s where we agreed not to use geophysical manipulation as weapons of war. Presently, the treaties only allow us to do that within the boundaries of our own country. The reality is you can't contain weather by artificial boundaries. Será que devemos ficar preocupados quando ouvimos os sucessivos governos norte-americanos afirmar que querem renegociar os tratados climáticos? Que tipo de pesadelo poderá surgir caso continuemos neste rumo? Apesar de tendencialmente só nos lembrarmos das armas no contexto de guerra, a polícia e o exército já utilizaram o gás pimenta, o gás mostarda, os canhões de água para controlar civis desordeiros. Será que as armas de micro-ondas também poderão ser usadas contra o cidadão comum? E será que serão sempre utilizadas num contexto não letal? The theory is that you can do this in such a way that you can cause the discomfort but without causing any permanent damage. Uh, that's a question. Um, and, and it's a serious question. And the, the, the following question to that is, if you can control it, it's one thing, but what happens if you decide you don't want to control it? What happens if you decide that this is a technology that you want to use as a lethal weapon? Uh, that's an issue that's going to have to be dealt with. You know, the last time burning was used as a way to control behavior was in the Middle Ages, when we used to burn people at the stake and it was decided it was kind of inhumane. Yet we're going back to that exact thing. If there's one thing we've learned since the initial development of atomic weapons 60 years ago, it's that governments will try to make these devices as powerful as possible, in general. Hopefully never to be used, hopefully to be a deterrent. But it would not surprise anyone if the government continues to try to make these devices more and more powerful, so that at some point, we don't know, and this is speculation, but at some point it may be possible to develop a device that would disable the communications and electronic systems, anything with a chip in it, the cars, the toasters, the refrigerators, the televisions, in an entire city. If an electromagnetic pulse went off over a city, basically all the electronic things in your home would wink and go out. And they would be permanently destroyed. We're going to go back to the 1800s. With this kind of a society, we are not going to have refrigerators, dishwashers, and dare I say even a microwave. We're not going to have cell phones, telephones, and we're going to not have any form of communication as we know it. Without this communication, there's going to be complete chaos. There's going to be panic in the streets. Talk about issues of control and crowd control in particular. It's going to be complete chaos. Sabemos que os fabricantes de armamento vão continuar a aperfeiçoar as armas eletromagnéticas. Contudo, não sabemos os efeitos que elas podem ter no meio ambiente ou nas pessoas. Será que o futuro vai revelar mais incidentes como o de Bell Island? com poderosas explosões de energia inexplicáveis. O que aconteceu realmente nessa pequena ilha em 1978? Muitas pessoas acreditam que foi o resultado de uma experiência militar que deu para o torto. Se não for isso, como é que se pode explicar a deslocação imediata do general russo e dos cientistas de Los Alamos ao local do crime? Uma teoria amplamente aceita defende que a Rússia estava a tentar direcionar um sinal eletromagnético para Cuba mas que este foi atraído pelos depósitos de minério de ferro e milhares de tubagens de cobre existentes no subsolo da ilha, que atuaram como um gigantesco imã. Outras pessoas insistem que o feixe foi causado por uma tempestade solar. Também circulou a teoria do clarão. Provavelmente nunca saberemos o que realmente aconteceu em Bell Island, se o feixe resultou de uma arma ou de um fenómeno natural. Mas sabemos que as armas que tenham um efeito semelhante ao de Bell Island são o futuro da realidade bélica. E se a explosão gigantesca tivesse deflagrado não na pacata Bell Island, mas no bolício de Toronto ou de Nova York? Que estragos poderia ter causado numa selva eletrónica densamente povoada? The point is, when you when you start looking at affecting human beings, I think we need to be involved in that discussion. Human beings need to be having that debate. If we're going to develop new weapon systems that potentially are going to change the shape of war within the dem democracies, particularly those that are strong and controlling the military uh, forces of the planet right now, we ought to have those discussions, and they're not taking place. So you never know uh, 
probably for years, uh, what the long-term effects of the use of any weapon uh, is going to be, and especially uh, one like this that uh, uh, depends on sort of these vast, these intense bursts uh, of, uh, of radiation, electromagnetic radiation. Locução Alberto Ramos, Ideias e Letras.